Let's take you now to Portland, where a group called Rachel Corey's Ghost Brigade turned peaceful pro-Palestinian protests into violence, claiming responsibility for torching 17 police cars, saying they knew police were going to clear out protesters at Portland State University. So this is what they did. The group's name features the American activist Rachel Corey. She was killed back in 2003 by an Israeli bulldozer while she was protesting the Israeli army's destruction of Palestinian houses in Gaza. Corey said her dream was to give the poor a chance to save the thousands of lives lost in the Middle East, and she knew it would one day come true. Well, her father is denouncing the actions of Rachel Corey's Ghost Brigade, saying his daughter would not have wanted the group to use her name. I, I guess there's really nothing I can say to them. No, it's it's just wrong. They've they've co-opted Rachel's name for use that she would never have approved of. All right. Well, now I would like to welcome in Rachel's father. Craig Corey. Craig, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. I know this has to be difficult. What was your reaction to finding out this group, you know, co-opting your daughter's name and also claiming responsibility for burning multiple police vehicles in Portland? Well, I, I live about 120 miles north of there, so I know very little about the incident, just what I'm getting on um, news media. Of course, I don't approve of that. Our family, the Rachel Corey Foundation for Peace and Justice, does not approve of that. Uh, we were not living in Olympia during the 1999 uh, World Trade w Organization uh, Seattle protests. Rachel was a part of that. I'm told by some people that were there with her that when somebody broke some glass around her, Rachel actually was sweeping that up, helping to clean that up. So um, Rachel did stand in a protest against the Israeli military who were doing something wrong. And I, you know, I've been watching just your previous segment talking about uh, anti-Semitism. And uh, for our family, there's a real distinction between criticizing the actions of uh, Israel and Jews. So what I would remind your your people of, the people watching, is that Rachel was killed by Israeli soldiers. She was killed when she died by a Jew, Alice. It's a real obvious distinction. So, uh, of course, I abhor the violence that happened here. We know about how to do this sort of thing right. Martin Luther King, Gandhi, People like that taught us how to do it right. And up here in Olympia, if uh, the Evergreen State College, they did do it right. They had an encampment there. And uh, my wife and I were invited over there to see it. It's only a few miles from here. It's Rachel's alma mater. And that was quite peaceful. And the students, with some help from faculty, were uh, negotiating with the administration. They came to an agreement. The uh, administration has agreed to forming task force to work on, I think, four fronts of trying to make their campus a better a better place. We can see how that's a, it was a learning situation for me just to be there on that campus. And I know that it would have been a learning situation for others. That's incredibly difficult right. to do. Absolutely. But, but, but they managed to do it right. So I just, I would call for people Again, I come from a community, I'm thinking about when you talk about anti-Semitism, we need to also talk about Islamophobia. And I come from a community where I have stood uh, in front of the mosque on, uh, on a Friday afternoon with the local rabbi and a number of Jews and Christians when the mosque felt threatened. And I've stood on a Friday evening with Jews and Muslims to protect the temple. Right. Those days are pretty difficult now, but we need to get back in the United States and um, and bring ourselves together around that. Absolutely. And of course, Absolutely. I understand the immediacy of uh, people, the students and others, feeling like they have to stop this genocide that's going on in Gaza. Those are our friends that are being killed there, the people that my wife and I and our family know personally. And they're losing family members. It's horrific. But we've also been to the other side of that fence. We've been in the area that was attacked on October 7th, mm -hmm. and we met the people there. The loss of life 
is horrendous. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.